What about you folks? It's Lee here. Um, I'm back today to do the tutorials with, um, with you today for the book binding. There's a few different techniques I use whenever I'm making books, but I'm going to show you the most basic tutorial on how you can make them. It's very simple, very straightforward. You don't need fancy things um, to buy in or anything. You know, it's, it's pretty much what you've got in your home. There, um, I'll explain I'll explain the different threads and things that I use, but you can pretty much use a uh, darning thread that you've got at home. Okay, first of all, I want to discuss a few, um, a few of the basics that we've got in book making. Now, this is a book I've made. I'm in the middle of doing for a friend. Um, whenever you whenever you um, see a book now, whenever you look at the spine, you will see that um, it's all divided into separately bu separately um, bound bundles in your book. Now these are called signatures. So this is the first thing that you have to do whenever you're making a book. You have to divide your pages into signatures. You couldn't just take your paper, fold it up and put it into your book because if you did that, see how the pages, some are out further than the other. So these pages are further back in the book and these are sitting out more. So you couldn't make a signature like that because, you, or you couldn't make a book like that because it just wouldn't look right. It wouldn't sit right. It'd be very difficult to sew and put into um, your binding. It would fall apart very easily. So what you have to do is you have to divide your pages into signatures. Now, normally, if I'm doing a book this size, so this is A4 paper, which is, I think, in the American measurements, is eight and a half by eleven, pretty much roughly the same. Um, whenever I'm doing a book this size, so this is. Um, half the page which is an A5 here in the UK and Ireland um, so it'll be an A5 just a wee bit bigger than an A5 book because obviously the cover is going to be a bit bigger I only do signatures of five pages so that means you're going to have ten pages in a signature so obviously if I take five pages here and fold it over that's going to be ten pages in the book now I find um, a bone folder very handy because you need you need um, your fold in the page to be very very crisp. So I've got my five pages. If you don't have a bone folder, it's not a big deal. Um, you can use a ruler, you know, or the side of your scissors. That's perfectly fine. So I just crease it over. Fold all the five pages. Just fold the five pages together. You don't have to do it one at a time. So that's your five pages and it's perfect. Take another five. So for this book, I think I'm going to have maybe eight signatures in the actual book. So that'll be 80 pages in the book. And that'll be 40 sheets of A4 paper that you'll need. Just keep folding them over, make sure you line them up perfectly. Use your bone folder. So I'll carry on doing the, um, the signatures here. And once I have them all done, I'll come back and show you what the next step is. Um, we've got all our signatures folded and just put them together here and make sure that it you know it's nice nice and straight um obviously you know it's it's going to be a handmade book it's not going to be perfect like um you know just straight off the uh, conveyor belt in a factory so it will look handmade it's not going to look absolutely perfect pristine but it's going to be as good as you can get it you know and um, now this this is just ordinary cheap copier paper i think it's 80 um, GSM so I mean it's it's not super expensive this is just for a journal if you're going to be making an art journal I would suggest you used something like watercolour paper which is obviously thicker you can get that in different GSMs or you can also use canvas paper um, it's, it's widely available now or you can actually get canvas on a roll and then just cut it to the size that you want so that's you know that's for an art journal if you're going to be using a lot of paint and wet materials on the pages this is purely just for a notebook or a journal that you're going to write on or doodle in or whatever and what I like to do is put them together and then just run my bone folder up the front of it turn it round 
and do it down the back. Now what we need to do is put holes in the signature for the sewing. Um, now this is quite a small notebook. You can put holes the whole way up the side if you want to be really particular about the spine but to be honest I find with a book this size you actually can get away with four holes down the signatures. Um, it's a small enough book so it doesn't need you know a hole, a sewing hole in every centimetre of the page. I've made these books with um, four sew holes and they work perfectly fine so there's no problem there. So what I've done is I have done a template for all the different size of books that I make. This one here is the A5 four hole no notebook um, template. It's I've just written here that it's a small book, five pages to a signature and eight signatures so I know that um, this template suits this amount of pages. Just keeps me right because you know I, I do make quite a few books in different sizes so it's handy to have um, it written on the side so I know how many pages that the book can take. Um, so for this one I just measured, I sort of, to be honest I eyeballed it um, but if you're wanting exact measurements, let me see, I put, take my signature, put the page in the middle and let me see, I'll put a wee ruler here just for those who want exact measurements. So six centimetres in, do a hole, then measure up three centimetres, do a hole, three centimetres, do a hole, three centimetres, do a hole, and that should leave you the six centimetres here. So what I do is I take an old piece of foam. Now this piece of foam is disgusting. I glue on it, I punch holes in it. It is my little foam mate that I use all the time, so please excuse it's disgusting appearance. I take each signature then and I lay it on my foam. I take this tool here, um, it was a set that I got, a set of awls that I got um, on eBay and you get six different sizes so this is the largest size that I'm using here. Right so I'll put my signatures down, make sure the pages are all together perfectly. Take your template, line it up, and because it's um, A5 as well, it'll fit perfectly in. So I just line the bottom corner with my signature, and then punch your holes. Now that should line it up exactly with the spine because you have put your template right in to the center of your page, or your signature, sorry. So we're just going to punch the holes now. You probably could take a couple of signatures at a time and do it, but to be honest, you want to make sure that you get the holes in the crease of the signature. So I suggest doing one at a time. And whenever you fold your signature back up again, you've got the holes down the spine of your signature you can see there. So just set that aside and take your next signature. Make sure your pages are together. Put your template in, line it up in the crease. Just line it up at the bottom there. Now there is another way of doing this for bigger books that I would do. I actually, um, maybe I shouldn't confuse you, but I, I take a saw, a hacksaw, to the paper but that is for a more advanced tutorial I think for this now because this is a small book we can get away with just punching the holes down the spine. Fold that up and there's another one. Open that up. Make sure your pages are together. Put this in the crease now. If you're not sure that you've got the crease right all you have to do is close your signature and push your paper in with your hand or your template, sorry, your sew and hold template. So just open that up, make sure it's lined up properly at the bottom and poke the holes in. another signature done so I'll just carry on doing these and I'll probably fast forward it on the video. Okay that's all your signatures done. 
you can see down the side of the spine of the pages all the holes that run down there so the next step that we are going to do is we're going to sew our pages together Folks, we're back. We're going to be sewing our signatures together. So, um, there are a few things that you're going to need uh, whenever you're sewing your your um, signatures together. You're going to need a needle, and you're going to need thread. Now, um, there are book binding needles that you can buy. These are curved needles that uh, some book binders find very useful for um, binding their books together. I have these, but I don't use them. I personally find them a bit cumbersome. Whenever uh, I'm making my book now, I actually took the tip off it there too because these can be used for uh, other things other than um, book binding. So I did take the tip off it. Now, on any needles that I use, I always take the tips off them because you do inevitably stick yourself with the pins and the sharp uh, end isn't actually needed because you have your holes already in your signature. So as long as the holes are, are good enough and big enough, the needle is going to fit through, you don't need the sharp end, so take it off, just whack it off. Keep a couple of needles that you're going to use for book binding specifically, like I have here. Um, don't go out and buy one of these, to be honest, I find them a bit annoying to use. So I just use a large head needle, as you can see. It's got quite a good eye on it. There we go. If you can see the eye on it. So again, I've chopped off the uh, the pointy top on this. So I just want to talk to you a wee second about the thread. Originally, whenever I started book binding, um, I was using just ordinary household thread. It's a wee bit too thin. Uh, the books did work, obviously, but I find that they were a wee bit sort of just a wee bit jiggly in the book. They weren't um, well lined up. The, the thread didn't hold it perfectly well. So I used darning thread, which is a wee bit thicker. I used darning thread, which I think is a wee bit thicker and it works as well. But I decided, um, I find that it, it knots whenever you're pulling it through. You tend to get knots quite a bit in that sort of thread. Now, if you're careful, you can use it and perfectly well, it'll hold your book together. We're gonna to use glue anyway, so there's not a big issue, but um, if you're okay with being careful and threading it through and making sure it doesn't get any knots or get tangled or whatever, that's fair enough. You use darning thread, that's perfectly fine. But I had a wee look on eBay and I came across waxed linen thread. Now there's waxed linen thread and there's waxed cotton thread. There's no real difference when it comes to book binding. So I got the black waxed linen thread. I went for the one millimetre. You can get different thicknesses in it, but I personally find the one mil millimetre is a good thickness for your books. If you go any thicker, I'll just show you the two millimeter. There's a considerable difference. And I think if you go for this sort of larger one, it tends to loosen a wee bit a wee bit more as well and it doesn't make your signatures quite as tight. So if you can get um, anything up to one millimeter um, wax linen thread, that'll do well. And, and you can actually wax your own thread if you want to have a go at that. I find uh, wax thread doesn't tangle the way the ordinary threads do, so um, if you can get your hands on this, certainly go ahead. If you can't, don't worry. Just use ordinary darning thread, it's perfectly fine. And if you fancy having a wee go at waxing your own with a candle or whatever, but please be careful, um, you can do that. But um, this is what we're gonna need. This is just an ordinary household needle, and I've got my thread on it here. Now the way I work out how much thread I need is I measure it by the length of the signature and by the amount of signatures I have. So I've got eight signatures. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I always add on a wee bit extra, about another length of um, of thread just in case there's um, any mishaps or mistakes or anything and plus you need a wee bit at the end of your needle here and you'll need another wee bit coming out of the back of the signatures as well. I also find handy um, some ribbon and I'll show you what I need to do with that in a wee second. I find it handy to have an old book. This is a very old book I got from a charity shop. So when I'm doing my signatures I take one signature at a time take the other signatures, set them in front of you and whenever I'm sewing I have it on the lip of the book so I can sew it perfectly 
and have a good view of it as well. Uh, another thing just about the ribbon, it's going to be sewn into your signatures as well. So what I find I do for the measurement of it, you want it overhanging over the book. I should have used a different colour really, shouldn't I? But overhang, wrap it around the spine and bring it round to this side and let it overhang again. So we'll just cut off that length. And so that is going to be sewn into your signatures. Now because I've got four holes here, I'm going to use two ribbons. Make sure the signature line uh, holes all line up together because sometimes, um, you know, if, particularly with my templates, because I'm just sort of eyeballing it, sometimes a hole might be um, further spaced apart. So if I turn this round like that, you can see that the, the holes don't line up perfectly. This one's down a wee bit more, further down. So make sure that your signature holes are um, exactly lined up. Right, so I've got one signature on the book here and I've got my other signatures just in front of me here. Now I'm left-handed, so I start from the left-hand side, but it doesn't matter if you start from the left or the right. But what I do is I go to the middle of the signature and I hold it. So I've got my hand in the middle of the signature, my four fingers here, my thumb round at this side. I take my needle and thread and we're going to do just a simple in and out stitch. So it's very, very easy. So there's the needle, needle um, up through the middle. Pull your thread out. Not the whole way, obviously we need to leave just a wee tail, just like that. It's about an inch and a half, okay? So we're on the inside of our book now, our, our signature, sorry, and we need to go out through the next hole. So we're on the outside of the signature again, so we need to go in through the next hole. Now whenever you're putting the needle in through, make sure it doesn't slide under like one of the other pages and doesn't come through to the middle. You have to make sure it comes through to the middle because if you don't, that means it's not sewing each of the signatures together. And you want all your signatures sewn together. So that's it through there. And then out through the last hole. Now there's a technique for um, keeping your threads taut and I suppose the, the thing would, we would intend to do is to pull it forward towards you but, it, but if you pull it towards you what you're actually going to do is you're going to pull the thread so tight that it's going to rip right along here and that'll pull your signature apart which means you'll have to start all over again so you don't want to pull forward like this what you want to do is you take your tail end you take the thread that has the needle on it and you pull out to the sides oops and that makes sure that your signature is taut and it's nice and tight in here as well you can see it's sitting flush if you don't pull the threads they'll be sitting like this and then whenever you go to put your book together they'll be sitting and they'll be wobbling inside um, the book itself so you need to make sure that each signature is nice and tight now the thing is as you're working with each signature it is going to loosen up so you need to do this with every signature you need to sort of pull it halfway through and make sure everything's tight and just get in the habit of making sure that the threads are nice and taut so that's that signature this is your first signature we don't need to do anything special with it it was just in and out in and out so you grab your next signature and put it on top of the first one that you sewed now this is where we came out through the last um through the last hole here so our needle and thread is sitting at this last hole so I'll put my hand again inside and I'm going to go to the corresponding hole above the last stitch that we made so my needle and thread came out through this hole so I'm going to go in through this hole of the next signature just make sure my wee tail doesn't disappear sorry about that so there we go in through that hole pull the signature down Just pull your thread out and as you can see that are that is um, joining the first signature to the second signature so we're on the inside of your book again and we go out through the next hole pull your thread through 
and then we go up in through the next hole pull the thread through give it a wee pull just gently and out through the final sewing hole and pull your thread through now as you can see here on this signature the first signature has the wee tail and your thread has just come through this last hole so you can see that this side is joined together but we need to join this this side somehow so what you do is make sure all your threads are nice and taut pull out to the side as I showed you before pull out to the side here and we're just simply going to tie um, a square knot a double square knot with these two so I've pulled my threads nice and taut One and two. So that's those two signatures. That's number one signature and number two signature joined together. And you've just got your wee tail here. Now this is um, the only time you'll ever have to do the square knot. You won't have to do this for the rest of the signatures. There's a specific stitch that you have to do and I'll show you how to do that. So that's your first signature and your second signature joined together. You can see just in the middle of the signature here that is your thread. You can go for white. You can get waxed white thread. Um, at the time I didn't realise you could and I just got the black but it's fine. I mean you're not, you're not going to see it in the rest of the book. So what we want to do is make sure that we have as little a gap between each signature as possible. So you see there. We want to make sure that this is as tight as possible together because that, um, you know, the tighter you have that, the less movement there is in your signatures. I mean, there's no, virtually no movement in that signature at all. But um, if you find that there is a wee bit of movement, don't panic. That's where the threads come in. I tell you what, you don't, sorry, I made a mistake. You don't need um, the two ribbons for the, uh, for the four hole signature you only need one and to be perfectly honest you don't necessarily need the thread at all for a book this size but because I said I was using ribbons I'll go ahead and use the ribbon and you'll see here because I've only got one line on the outside I can only add one ribbon so what I do is I add um, my first signature and my second signature together and then I thread my ribbon through just pull it up a wee bit there and put it through the first one and the second one, what a lot of people do is they, they actually hold the thread while they're sewing it in. Um, I find whenever you're doing your first and second signature, that's quite difficult to sort of manage. You're trying to, you know, thread it through, hold on to the ribbon at the same time while trying to keep your, your uh, thread taut. So what I do is I just do my first and second, second signature and then just thread them, thread them through. So there we go. So um, whenever it comes to the gluing section of the, the book, your threads actually help pull your signatures together. So if there is that wee bit of movement in them, um, the threads will help stop um, the spacing between the signatures. So we'll just have that in there like that. Now we'll take our third signature and we'll set it on top of our second signature. And again, because our needle and thread come out through this hole here, we're starting at this side. So put my hand in the signature. Hmm, there we go. Put it up through. And go in through the next hole. Now this time what you need to do is you have to make sure that the thread is on the inside of the thread so we're going to take our thread through this hole come round the ribbon and go in through the next hole don't panic if you don't get it um, in straight away you know you can sort of thread it up through as I did and just ensure that you're making your threads nice and taut see I'm pulling that through and through the last hole now this is where we get to the end here so I've pulled my threads tight by pulling it out to the side and you will see that this signature and this signature are joined together but again this end one isn't joined and whereas before we had the wee tail at this side so we could do the double knot to um, affix them together there's no wee tail at this side so there's a little stitch that you can do to join your signatures together. Pull my thread 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the first and second signature behind this little stitch here. So I'll put my needle in and you just pull it out through the side. So you're going behind this stitch here, pull it out, pull your thread through almost to the end and you'll see, just leave a wee loop, just a wee tiny loop, take your needle, go back round to the back again, back into the inside here and you're going to take your needle and you're going to go through that loop and pull your thread again and as you're coming to the end pull your thread up and you see the little eight that it makes in the thread pull your thread up towards your third signature because this is what's going to make the knot nice and tight and make sure that there's very little space in between your signatures so pull now be careful because you could actually pull so hard and you rip or um, break your thread so pull and that knots it and that joins signature two and three together so I'm going to show you that again we're just going to add another signature take your third signature lift the ribbon up add the signature pull your ribbon forward hand in the middle of the signature and back through this hole And that's it pulled tight. Down through the next hole. Behind the ribbon. Push the ribbon forward. If you find it too fiddly with the ribbon, don't panic. It's fine. You don't really need it for a book this size. I'm just a bit particular and do like it. Um, whenever I do a bigger book, I usually have about three or four ribbons in a large book. But um, for a wee book this size, it's not essential. But if you do just want to be that little bit careful because it's your first first time ever doing it, um, it does really help with um, keeping the space down between the signatures. So if you want to have it, have it. If you don't, don't. It's perfectly fine. And pull that tight. Make sure your signatures are lined up up here. You don't want them sitting, you know, you don't want it like that. And then your pages aren't straight. So whenever you're sewing, just keep, get into the habit of straightening your signatures together and make sure it's all perfectly aligned. So I'm pulling that thread tight. And this, right. Go through the last hole. And again, Make sure your threads are tight and we're going to do this little knot again. So what you do is you go through the two signatures below the signature you've just come out of. So this is one signature, two signatures, three signatures, four. So you're going to go between the two signatures below. Okay, so here's the two signatures below this one. One, two. So we're going behind. I'll just try and show this. So go between these two signatures behind that little stitch that um, added these two together in the first place or in the last signature. Pull your needle through and pull your thread until it makes a little loop. Just a small wee loop here. Okay. Take your needle, bring it behind that loop and pull it through pull your thread through and as you're coming towards the end you'll see it makes a little eight loop and you start to pull that tight and pull it upwards towards your top signature and just pull tight and there you go there's four signatures joined together let me show you the stitch just one more time just to make sure that everybody's got it the first hole, pull it tight, make sure your signatures are all lined up together and in through the next hole. Push your ribbon forward and go in through the next hole. Now you see the way this is sitting up? This is what I mean about making sure your signatures are really tight because if that was left like that whenever you put that in the book it would move and you don't want that in your book. You want it to be nice and straight on all your pages together. So we'll just pull 
a thread through and just give it a wee pull out to the side and then in through the last hole so we're into our last hole pull tight out to the side as I said before just check your threads okay are your ribbons okay pull tight and now you go between the two signatures before this one so then you've got your top signature and you're going between the two signatures below so that's this one put your thread in grab your needle if I can grab it and pull the thread through until you get a small loop Sorry, that went a wee bit fuzzy there. So we've got our wee loop here, okay. So we'll take our needle again. Sorry, I'm left-handed, I have to swap. And go behind. So we're bringing, we're not going in this way at the end of the signature. We're not going in here. We're coming behind this way, okay. So pull that through. There we go. It's making the wee eight. And you pull up towards your top signature. So there's five signatures together. So um, what I'll do now is I'll probably just fast forward this and if you need me to show you that um, that stitch again to add your signatures together just leave a comment below and I'll do a specific um, video for that but I'm sure you've, you've all got it by now. I mean I've done three so but if, they, if you have a problem sure just let me know. So I'll just fast forward through this. Okay, we've got to the last signature and we're just going to do our stitch again. Now at this point, what I suggest is you make sure all your pages are lined up perfectly. You give your thread a wee pull to make sure it's nice and tight and sort of pinch it here between the two previous signatures. Pull your thread through. And there we have the wee loop again and we're going to come behind, thread it through that wee loop and pull up. And that's it. That's your signature sewn. It's very, very simple. It's an easy stitch. It's just in and out, in and out. And your signature should, should look like this, like a perfect little thick black line just all along there. And then because we only used four holes, there should be one of the long lines on the outside which your thread or sorry your ribbon is threaded through and then at this other side you have a solid black line again with your wee tail so at this stage what you can do is you can um, cut this wee tail up now leave about a quarter of an inch behind you don't want to cut right up because if you cut too close to the um, to the thread You'll actually cut the knot itself and then the whole thing will ungather so you don't want that so leave about a quarter of an inch or um say about five not point five centimeters what's that five millimeters so just cut and do the same for the thread that's attached to your needle got them all perfectly aligned it's nice and tight um but we want to go that wee bit extra to make it even more secure we've got our ribbon in there and all so what we're going to do is we're going to glue the spine so it seeps in but you don't want it seeping down you know down into the, the signature you want it just to seep in the first sort of wee millimeter in and um, that will help secure your spine of the book so what I use is good old cheap PVA Glue, and um, this is from B and Q. That's a, I think it's a UK based company. I don't think you have that in America, but it's just a hardware store. So this is the decorators PVA glue. This was a one liter bottle, cheap as chips, and um, I use it. Um, I tend to, whenever I'm bookbinding, I tend to go for a, a three to one mix. So what I do is I put in three times PVA glue to one part water. Uh, but for the spine itself, what I'm actually going to do today is I'm just going to use 
the the PVA glue itself um, because I want it sort of to be thicker. This is quite thin PVA glue compared to some of the other ones like um, is it Anita's tacky glue? It's a wee bit thicker than this, so I won't water this one down for this for the actual spine of the book itself. So what we do is I'll show you what you'll need. You just need some bits of scrap paper. And I use these. They're sort of like large bulldog clips. But if you have ordinary bulldog clips that are going to be big enough, just use those because you know you need to, to hold your spine in tight like that whenever it's being glued. Um, so you can use these certainly if you as long as obviously you're it's gonna fit over your spine. If you've got a larger book, you're gonna need something like these or like these. <laughs> I'll use these today because I needed it three places to be held. And you need something like a brush or a foam, a foam brush or an ordinary old paintbrush. And you also need to cut a couple of pieces of paper that are going to go down the back of your spine. That are going to be glued onto it, but I'll do that in a wee second. I'm going to glue my ribbon down to my paper here. And I'm sort of looking at that and I'm thinking I'm not going to need of an inch and a half length so I might just cut that down a wee tad and just cut it down to about there so that's about two centimeters or just over half an inch and again I'm gonna have to use the lighter again because I've obviously cut that oh, oh, oh my god can't even use a lighter mm, don't smoke so Cut the other side. Just use your lighter along the edges there. Right, so give your uh, book a good tap. Make sure your pages are all lined up together. And you need to put your finger and thumb at each side of the ribbon and give it a good squeeze down to make sure that your ribbon is straight, that there's no wee puckered bits because if you pucker it, obviously that's going to leave more space between the signatures to move. So you want to make sure that your ribbon's really tight. Take my glue. I'm going to add some underneath. Use an old paintbrush just to dab some of the glue down. Put some on the underside of the ribbon. And glue that down and just pat it down with your paintbrush. Now you don't want to put so much glue on your ribbon and your paper that you're going to absolutely saturate the paper itself. Because I'm using 80 GSM paper, it's just ordinary printer paper, if you put too much glue on it'll soak it and the page will go ripply and it could even tear so just be aware of whenever you're gluing your paper that you don't put too much glue on it that it'll actually tear through the page. Turn it over, so squash it, squash it down, give it a wee pull and add your glue to the page and a wee touch on your ribbon. You need a wee touch on your ribbon too because um, it actually absorbs the glue quite well so you want enough on the ribbon that it's going to stick. And just add the glue there, get it close up to the edge of your signatures to the binding, or sorry to the spine and tap that down. I always like to keep a, an old cloth or um, kitchen roll handy just to wipe off any excess. I use the back of my um, paintbrush just to squash it down a wee bit and make sure it's well glued down. Now I've got a wee bit of glue and there and it's just got a wee bit dirty just with the edge of the of the ribbon being glued. Don't panic if this page gets a bit dirty because as I said it's going to get covered with cardstock. You're not going to see it. I mean, you could scribble your name there if you wanted and you're still not going to see it unless your paper is so thin that it'll be seen through the other side. But don't don't panic if this gets a bit grubby. We've got the ribbon glued. So now we have to add glue down the spine. And I think I'll carry on using the paintbrush because it's quite handy. It can get into the, the wee crevices and things. So take the glue and... Put a liberal amount 
and you'll probably look at this and think oh my godly you put way too much glue on you do need quite a lot of glue because the paper does absorb the glue very well put it over your thread as well put your ribbon in the middle so you'll see I have quite a bit of glue there try not to let it fall down the edges or anything see all that quite a lot of glue take your paintbrush sort of hold not too tight because you want to get a wee bit of glue down into each of the signatures so at this stage we're not holding it too tight uh, do your best not to get it down the side here if you do just mop it up a wee bit and make sure you don't let the glue spill over the top because if you get too much glue on the top here that's going to stick your pages together rather than just keeping it tight it means whenever you go to open your page you'll not be able to open them because it'll be stuck together so we'll just set that there for a second and just make sure that I've wiped off any dribbles that side and flip it over and mop up any wee dribbles that have gone over that side now you don't want to keep it sitting like this because the glue will run to one side you'll find you want to hold it up like this and I'll prop this up just against that can there now what we need to do is we need to find a couple of pieces of scrap paper that is going to go along, be glued along the top of your spine here. So what we do is we need to measure the width of the spine but whenever you're doing this you don't do it whenever it's just sitting loose. You have to squash the spine because it will be that tight whenever it's all glued and you have to measure the space between this side and this side whenever it's held tight so I'll just hold this tightly here and take my ruler and it's just under one centimeter wide so I need two strips of paper one centimeter wide by the length okay we've got a piece our spine piece of cardstock that we're going to be adding along the spine here so your signatures, your book is over there and it's drying with the glue. So we need to add glue to this and because it's cardstock it's a bit thicker you need to make sure you get plenty of glue on it. Make sure it soaks into your glue. Or sorry, into your, your cardstock. Just do a line of glue down the side there. And we're just going to start brushing that in to the card. And you think you know you think you're using too much, but it actually does absorb quite a bit of the glue. So I mean already that's absorbed. Just give it a little wipe. Wipe off the excess. And it actually needs another wee taste of glue. Just lift that up and wipe off the excess. Now you bring back in your, your book and we're going to lay this on. Now this glue isn't, um, this is still very tacky and wet so, and this is too, so we're going to lay this on. If um, it is dry, by the time you get to it you are going to have to add more glue so this will stick on because what you've got on here is for this cardstock. Um, it isn't going to be enough to hold it to the signature if this is dry, but because this is still wet it should be fine. Just lay that on there. Don't see any spills. Just mop up up to the edge of the signature and press it down. Now wee bits of glue will sort of spill out, but you just mop that up with um, a bit of kitchen roll. 
Um, the ribbon is already dry at this stage. So just press that down. Make sure it's pressed down well around the, the sewing section because obviously it has to be glued to the paper and the thread. So you don't see the thread at all now at the back of the spine. It's all glued and covered. And at this point, we're going to add the um, scrap bit of paper and our clips just to hold it in now at this stage. So you can see that the cardstock has been glued along the spine so you don't see the stitching anymore. You just see a wee bit maybe at the side here and just the wee, the wee tab. But that's pretty good looking. So I add three clips to my books. So a piece of paper here. Just cut that in half. Add it along the edge, but don't go up over your spine because then the glue will get stuck to your paper. So there we go. And add your clip. Your, your cardstock might move at this stage, but don't worry about that, we'll fix that in a wee second. Um, where's my other piece? And another clip. Add that up to the edge. And attach your clip. And then we add, I might add two extra, I might add an extra one if I've got one sitting about here. So just mop up any bits of excess glue that are going to sort of spill out whenever you squeeze it together. So I'll take this other piece of scrap paper, put it over the top. Now at this stage you don't want this touching, so what I do is I put a little tunnel in. So you can see that it's not touching the spine, so just put a wee tunnel in. Then add your next clip. Now we're doing this up close to the spine, as you can see we're not, you know, I'm not putting it, pushing it away down here, we're doing it up at the spine. Just press down a piece of cardstock. And then I think I'll add another one here. So Use a bulldog clip. Doing the wee tunnel again with the paper. And there we go. So that's going to help pull your spine in. You've got your wee piece of cardstock glued onto the back here. Just make sure that it's well down. bits that spill out, make sure you mop those up. So I'm just going to set this aside to dry while I get um, the covers made. It's time um, to make your covers. So I've just taken this piece of paper and I've folded it in half as representation of my signatures that are over there drying at the minute so I know what size to do the covers and the spine. Now we already know from um, doing the piece of cardstock we know how wide the spine is, so it was just under a centimetre wide. So I'll probably do my piece of um, mount board at about a centimetre wide as well. Um, I know my uh, my pages are A5 in size. Now you don't want to cut your, I'm using mount board, 2mm mount board, but you can use chipboard, you can use any cardboard you have. I mean you don't need to use mount board, you can use anything you want. Um, put cereal boxes, uh, use cereal box cardstock if you want and um, just glue them together just to make a good sturdy piece of card. This is just 2mm mount board, I like to use it. We know our uh, signatures are A5 in size but you don't want your cover 
to be exactly the same size as the signatures so you want them to be a little larger so this is the size of my signatures so I'll just measure it here so it's eight and a quarter by almost five and three quarter inches so I will make my covers because the spine is going to be there as well. I can do it the same width. I can do it the same width as the page or just a wee section maybe just a, a quarter of an inch larger um, but the height needs to be a wee bit longer so what did I say eight and a quarter so we'll do eight and a half inches by six inches. So I'll just cut my mount board. So what if I say eight and a half inches? So that's eight and a half there by six inches. there's one cover. I'll keep that to the side because we use this for the spine then. So what I do is, instead of measuring it all again, just to make sure that the covers are exactly the same size, I line this one up. And just draw the line. And there's the, the front and the back covers made, so we just have to cut the spine now. And as I said, I measured the spine, it's just under eight or um, just under a centimeter wide, I think it was about eight millimeters. So I'll do the, the spine for the book around the same, probably about one centimeter. I'll do it, it's probably easier than cutting eight millimeters, but it'll not matter anyway. Just try and get it as rough as roughly as close to the, the size of the spine as you can. I mean, it's the, the pointless making a spine absolutely massive compared to the spine you have here because then your book will not work. It needs to be around the same size as your spine. So I'll just measure this out now. Okay folks, you've got your two covers made, you've got your spine piece made. Now it's time to uh, put the paper on the outside to make the actual cover of the book. Now what I tend to do is I use just a piece of white um, A3 paper, but if you want you can use decorative paper providing it's big enough. If you have 12 by 12 or whatever um, you can use it and what you can choose to do is decorate one page. Decorate, with, decorate it with your paper, then do this page, decorate it, and then to join it together you put a contrasting piece of paper onto the spine and have it overlapping by an inch. And then that'll be your spine piece, gluing these two pieces together. But what I tend to do is, I like to, I like to decorate my own books, I don't usually use um, pattern paper on my books, but you can do that. Um, and if you want a tutorial on how to show you how to um, make these with um, pattern paper, please do ask in the comments section below and I'll do that for you. Uh, but I tend to just use an A3 piece of paper and glue it on and then I decorate the paper myself, make my own background paper. So we're going to do that now. Um, I have laid the paper or the, the book covers down and I've lined them up with my grid here so I sort of know where everything is and it's lined up straight. I've put my spine piece down in the middle and I've left about half a centimetre, five millimetre gap between the spine piece and the two book covers. Uh, so half a, what's that, half a centimetre is about, it's just under a quarter of an inch. And then I lay my ruler just down at the bottom here just to make sure that uh, I keep everything where it should be. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add glue onto the book covers for the paper to glue onto it. So this is where I use my mix. This is my 3 to 1 mix. I don't have very much left. I'll have to get some more. Mix them up. And I use a, a foam brush. A brush. Um, now whenever you're painting this on, this is going to move, but this is the advantage of having it lined up with your grids and um, having the ruler on the bottom so you know 
where it can all go back to. So I'm just going to clean this up, give it a good shake. And make sure that I get it out to every corner and I get glue absolutely everywhere on the piece of my board. If you leave a wee section that hasn't been glued, you'll find when you put your paper on and you smooth it out that there's an air bubble. So you want to make sure that you get glue all over it. Just put that back, as you can see there's a bit of movement. Place everything back where it should be. You need to work quickly because PVA does um, does dry very very quickly. So I have everything lined up, and I'm just going to take a piece of paper, make sure it's all lined up where it should be, and take my ruler away, and add my piece of paper. And press down. Give it a good press out to all the corners, all the edges. Make sure you squeeze out any air that could be in there. And also take a bone folder. I'm just going to clean my ruler off here. I can put that away. Take your bone folder then. Give it a good press. Not to get any wrinkles in the paper, but I mean it's it's not a big issue. Uh, I, as I said, I, I decorate my own paper anyway, so you're not going to see it. So there you go. That's that's the cover glued on. You can just see the outline of the mount board there and the spine. Just make sure that's well done. We're just going to flip it over. And at this stage, just lift your book out of the way and give your table a bit of a wipe because there's bound to be some glue left on it. So there we are, this is going to be the outside of your book and here's the inside of your book. So I think I showed before in um, my craft organiser how to do all this so I might end up fast forwarding through this section because it is in a previous video but um, if you can go back and refer to it, it was the craft organiser. So I'm going to glue down my sides so what I do is I take my bone folder, the pointed tip and I just run my bone folder down the side of the covers and along the top. This just makes the, uh, the, the paper easier to fold. And just start working your paper. Press it down. I tend to do one side and then do the opposite side. And even run your bone folder along the seam there. So we're going to miter the corners. Take your scissors. And I've shown you how to do this in the, the craft, um, craft folder tutorial. But I'll just do it quickly here. You don't go right down to the edge. You leave like uh, an eighth maybe a sixteenth of an inch by two millimetres gap maybe more it just depends, that's quite large do that on all four sides and then we're going to glue our sides down so depending on where you start. So if I start with this flap, I do this first and then glue the, the opposite side to it. Or if I start here, I'll glue that down and then go to the opposite side of it. So I'll start down here. It's probably a bit of glue left in my foam brush.
here. Now this is the same that I showed you in the previous craft folder tutorial. You need to bring in your wee sides just like you would with a present if you were wrapping a present. And that just makes sure that your corner is perfect. I'll just show you. If I was to wrap this over without tucking in the corner, you would have just turn it around here. See this wee bit of paper sticking out? You'd have that on all four corners. So what you do is you just take your bone folder and tuck that in. Just fold that wee corner in. And then whenever you turn it over, you've got perfect book corners and no wee bit sticking out. Okay, we're bringing our book back in. It's been sitting out around for quite a while, so we're just going to remove all these bits and pieces. Now, just be careful when you do this because you can't guarantee that some of this paper hasn't glued to your outside pieces of paper, so just be careful. You can have wee tears and whatever. Be careful. So, we'll just take these all off. It's just stuck a wee bit there. Just Nope, it's come off okay. And that one's come off fine. This one's just glued a wee bit. Yeah, it's come off. So there you go. It's still a wee bit tacky. It's not glued perfectly, but just for the tutorial purposes, I'll just carry on. But I would suggest that you do leave it at least an hour to dry. Just give it, at the very least, an hour, up to two hours to dry. Um, yeah, it's looking good. You can see paper or the cardstock down the spine. So you don't see the threads. And then this is just a wee bit grubby, but don't worry about that. And then there's all your pages. And look, not one space. Not a space anywhere between the signatures. So I'll just put that down. So now we're going to bring in the pieces of cardstock that is going to glue onto this page. And then this side will be glued on to the outside of your book. So if I just bring in this book again, I'll show you what I mean by this being glued to the inside. Just look at this book. Let's see that this is the cardstock. So I glued it to this piece of paper, which is this outside piece. And then it goes on to the inside of your book cover. And that's what holds your book the book part onto the cover part. So you do that for the front and you do that for the back. And then you can do whatever you want here, decorate this or put envelopes in it like I like to do. So I use those a bit with envelopes in it so you can store notes and tickets that you want to keep from maybe the cinema or a gig you've been to. Um, so that's that's what you do. You just use a piece of cardstock. Nothing difficult. We all have cardstock so I'll show you how we add that. This is why you should probably leave this a good hour because that's sort of lifting a wee bit there but I'll not panic about it too much just for um, this tutorial it'll not matter. I just want to make sure that's well glued down that's why I sort of recommend keeping it sitting for an hour or if you're really impatient you could use probably your heat tool but I would recommend you didn't. I would suggest you just let it air dry because if you use the heat tool it tends to curl up the paper a wee bit and mix the the glue bubble but if you're really really impatient you could I suppose get away like with lightly drying it with your heat tool but then I would leave it the rest of the time just to let it dry naturally. You can also do that with the of, with the cover if you want to use your heat tool sort of to speed up the process you can certainly do that that's not a problem with the cover but um, for the spine I would suggest maybe start it if you want with the heat tool but I would suggest leaving it to dry on its own. We'll just tear on because we've got 
things to do. I take a piece of um, old cardstock or whatever you've got laying about. I'll just use this here. And I put it on the inside of this page. So the cardstock is going to glue on here. So we're going to glue your cardstock and it's going to go onto that first page of your book. And then this will sort of get folded over like that and then this this side will get glued onto the inside of your book and that's what's going to hold your book together. So we'll just, I think I'll glue actually, I'll glue onto the cardstock because it's a bit thicker and because this paper is quite thin I don't want it um, to turn with a wet glue. And my trusty foam brush. And I'll just glue one half of the cardstock. And make sure you get the glue everywhere out to the edges, particularly the edges, they need to be well glued. But again, you have to get it everywhere in the middle because you'll end up with um, air pockets and you don't want that. Turn the cardstock over. That's the other piece for the back, so we'll just move that out of the way for now. And place that up to the edge. Should put a bit of glue there. Just mop that up. And press it down firmly. And you see it's just curling up a wee bit here. That's just because the glue is so wet, but whenever that dries it will go back out again. Just use your bone folder. Now this is a stage where you don't want to be getting this page mucky because this is going to be seen in the book. You can decorate it obviously and cover it with whatever you want. But try to be careful not to get wee glue marks or whatever. Really fingerprints over it. Just give that a good press down. And then this, this is the side that's going to go on to your book cover. So just leave that like that for now. Take this out. Flip it over to the back, and this is your back cover. So again, take your paper, and slide your piece of scrap paper on the inside so you don't get glue anywhere else on your book. Take your nice next piece of card. It's going to be glued on there. And take your glue and foam brush. Place your glue on half of this page as well. Turn it over. Just make sure there's no glue on the side of it and just place it down on your back page. And press down. And again this is the part that's going to be glued to the um, inside cover of your book. Turn this back over, make sure it's still glued down well. Pressing it down to the edge of the spine. So I'll just show you here. So whenever you open your book, this will be the inside, glued into the inside of your cover. You'll open your book like this, and this is what it'll look like. And then you open your pages, just like that. So we have to come in now with the cover, and then add it to the book, and then that's finished. You just have to decorate your book any way you want. Okay, this is the time where we're going to add the book cover to your book. Um, I, I did something a bit silly. I put both sides of card on, which I've never done before and I don't know why I did it. So um, in future, if you're doing it, just put one piece of card on first and then glue it to the inside of your book and then turn it over, put the back piece on 
and then glue that to the inside of your book. It, it's not a disaster. The book will still work. It just makes it a wee bit awkward if you glue both sections on at the same time. I don't know why I did it. I've never done it before. But anyway, we live and learn. Learn from my mistakes. So, got our book cover that's been drying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this in into the spine and line it up how I want my book to sit. Now this might work actually okay. This might be quite a good way of doing it. We'll soon see. So we'll line the spine up with the spine. Now you're not going to glue the spine to the, um, the inside of your cover. You don't do that. It's just this piece of cardboard that gets glued. The spine itself doesn't get glued to the book cover at all. Um, because obviously you need the book cover to be able to move so you can open the pages out properly. That's pretty good. And then what I tend to do is line it up where I want it. And before I glue it, I actually close the book over so I get the crease where I want my cardstock. So that's obstructing the spine a wee bit, so I just need to move this forward. This is what I'm saying with them um, gluing one piece on at a time because if I had done that it would have been easier for me to put this together. Just make sure that closes up over the spine. This needs to be a wee bit closer. good. And then so the spine straight up against the inside of the book spine and then I close that over and that should give me the crease and my cardstock that I need. Okay, back in with our scratch piece of paper, our scrap piece of paper, sorry. Just put it there and glue our piece of cardstock. What I do is I tend to bring the book up to the spine and then bring this piece of card up, making sure it's straight. And put that away and close it. Give it a good one. Then open your book. And you'll see it's creased into the spine there. Just make sure the crease line's perfect. Then turn your book onto its side. Make sure your cardstock's glued down well into the inside page. So this crease actually goes into the wee creases that you made. Remember on the outside, this was the space between the book cover and the spine itself. So this crease on the inside actually sits in here on the inside of your book. And then that means that means that your book can open outright perfectly. So you don't actually need to glue the spine itself to the back piece or the inside of the book cover. If you were to glue the spine to the book cover, your book wouldn't open out properly like this. It would have problems, it would be too tight, it would struggle. You'd only maybe get it open like this, sort of halfway, but you want your book to open outright flat. And this is something I had to learn the hard way. Um, I, uh, I had a, a few issues with some books that were only open to the side. Now I wasn't gluing, I wasn't gluing this wasn't gluing the spine down to the back piece but um, I had just been making a few wee mistakes with this where that um, this crease line was in a wee bit or maybe too far this way and it meant it wasn't sitting on the space between the spine and the cover and it meant the book couldn't open out properly but uh, we got it sorted finally I worked it out I worked out what I was doing wrong so that's your front cover done and usually whenever you get the front cover done, the back piece is pretty easy. It just sort of falls into place. You just have to glue it over. So we'll just take our scratch. 
little scrap piece of paper here. So we bring the spine up, make sure it's put it up against the spine of the the um, book itself. So the outside cover spine, put it up. Bring your cardstock up to meet the inside part of the book cover. Take your scrap piece of paper out. Make sure that's well glued down. And close your book and press it down. So press your book down, open it again, put it up onto its side, make sure the crease is defined and press down. There you have it. That's your book made. Complete. Perfect and ready for you to journal in, to decorate any way you want. So I'll just show you. You can decorate the inside as well. You can paint on it or you can add wee envelopes to, to keep notes and whatever. And there's your book. Perfectly made. This is a smaller one. This is sort of half half the size of that. And that's how I decorated the cover. This one was actually, um, I did use pattern paper because the book was small enough. I didn't have to use the A3 paper so I was able to use the um, the Prima. Um, which one was it? Pixie Glen, I think. I think that's its name. I think that's the only one I've got actually. Um, yeah, so I used the Pixie Glen paper for this one. And I made a wee mistake and cut it too short. It should have come out a wee bit further here, but I mean, it's it's not an issue at all. And that's the book there. Now it's decorated. I put nice wee book corners on it. And I put a hole in here with my um, crocodile. And just added this wee chain and it can come off because it's on a swivel clasp. So you can add it to your bag or your phone or whatever. So that's it, folks. That's how you make a book. This is the most basic way I know of making it myself. Um, I hope you enjoyed these tutorials. I'd love to hear your comments and if you have any questions at all just give me a wee shout below or you can PM me as well and I'll gladly help you any way I can. So thanks for watching everybody. That's it. Bye for now. Hello everybody, it's Lee here. Um, I'm making a couple of uh, small journals here for a giveaway I'm doing on my blog. I haven't got it up yet, but um, my blog's a year old now, so I thought I was going to do a giveaway. But while I was making these, um, I thought I should run through adding your um, signatures to the book cover again, because whenever I did the original Big Bang tutorials, as you know, those of you who have watched them, um, I, did, I made a little mistake and I glued this side and this side at the same time whenever I was putting the book in. Now, I personally don't do it that way. Why I did it that way on that video, God only knows. I have no idea why I did it. But anyway, so I thought I would, I would show you what I usually do in a bit of a revised tutorial. So um, I've got my uh, signatures made here. I've just gone around them with, which one? Vintage Photo Distress Ink. And on the binding of this one, what I actually did was instead of using strips of ribbon, I used a uh, cheesecloth. It's a wee bit grubby just with the, the ink, but it has held it really well. I actually like this. I think I might be using this again. It has held it really well. So, um, so I've got my book covers here. Uh, I've got the two covers. I've got my spine piece and then the little space, about a quarter of an inch space between the spine piece and the uh, front and back cover. We're going to add glue to one side first, put it in our book, and then glue the other side and then put it on our book again. So what I find the best way of doing it is, if you look here, you've got your spine piece and your cover and you've got this wee gully. 
So what you want to do is you want to line up your book that this edge of the spine just hangs over slightly into this gully. So I'm just going to place mine into the gully just slightly, just overhang the book cover itself ever so slightly. So I'll just show you this. Now whenever I bring this up close this page is going to look very dirty but it's just the, the um, vintage photo. So I'll just place that where I want it. So if you can see, here is my spine piece. Here's the gully. You can just see it running along there. And I have placed my spine slightly hanging into the gully. So it's between the book cover and the spine piece. So the, the pages are just hanging over into that gully just ever so slightly. Probably an eighth of an inch. Let me see, you've got it hanging over just a wee tad too much there. Oh right, it was just the top pages making it look like it was overhanging. So I'll have that hanging over just into the gully slightly. So when I'm making my book what I do is I push my spine piece up against it. Make sure it's all straight. The paper where I want it. So I'll push my spine piece up against it. Like this. Okay. Now you'll think to yourself, my goodness, there's a big gap there, but this is what this gully, this is where this gully comes in. So whenever you push the spine piece up against it, it's going to look like that. Okay. And then you push down. So whenever you push down, you see the crease on the front of the book? That makes that crease. So you're pressing down on that and then you tip it over like that and then you glue it. So this is where the glue is going to go on this piece here. So I'm pushing it down and the glue will be on the inside page here and push down. And then what you do is you just, you know, you open it up and flip it and make sure the glue goes down properly. So I'm happy enough where, with where this is sitting. And the glue's a wee bit wet still. Trust me, as usual, I do things before I should, so do as I say, not as I do. Let your spine um, let your spine dry because it's not meant to stick to the back piece here. It's meant to be free, so whenever you open your book, um, there's space for your spine and your book to expand and it can open flat out. So I have that sitting in the position that I'm happy with. Um, there's space here along the top, space around the side and space here, just probably about quarter of an inch. So take a bit of scrap paper, lift your first page. This is the page that sort of gets dirty and grubby. And it's a bit of a bit of a beaten. So put my scrap piece of paper in and put my glue on. I've got some on this foam brush at the minute, but give it a squeeze out there. So you have to make sure that you get glue on every inch every millimeter of the paper and the reason being is if you have a wee piece missing here that's going to create an air pocket and that's the last thing you want you don't want to have an air pocket on your, your um, inside page side so as I said before push your spine up push down take the scratch piece of paper out so I'll just move this so you can see it so I'm pressing down, so my little gully here in the front page is created, okay, and close over and give it a good press. So at this point what I do is I just flip the book over and open it and use my bone folder. be gentle here because you know this this is very very cheap copier paper this is only 80 GSM and um, so whenever the glue hits it it's obviously going to get very wet so what I'm going to do now is um, because this is such cheap copier paper if I was to close this over now the uh, the moisture from the glue on this page could transfer onto this page and then that would make you know sort of wee lumps and bumps and that sort of thing so I've just got a clear 
uh, plastic cello bag here and I'm just going to put that there until that dries. So now we'll go to our other side and again we'll be doing the same technique so pushing it up to the spine, making sure it's straight, pushing down and then closing. the glue. Again making sure you get it right out to the edges. Okay so push up to the spine, push down and close. Turn the book over. Just push it on the spine there. over and burnish the inside with your bone folder. Again just being gentle. And there you go folks, that's your book. Completed, finished. It has a nice um, gully on the front and your book just opens like that. And then whenever you open the book the pages open properly. And that's because your spine isn't stuck down to the spine piece. If that was stuck to the, the spine piece, that would be very difficult to open. The book would only sort of open that way. And that's not what you want in a book. You want your book to be able to open out right like that. So I'll just set this aside to dry. So that's it for me, folks. Um, I hope this has been more helpful. I, knew there were, I know there was a few questions about uh, putting the spine piece or putting the um, signatures onto the cover. Um, so I hope this sorts out a few questions. If you have any other questions, please do PM me. I have no problem answering questions. If you need to ask me 10 different questions in a row, I'm perfectly happy to answer them, honestly. Um, I'm more than delighted to help any way I can. So um, hopefully this will clear things up a wee bit better for you. And uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Give me a wee shout if you need anything else. Okay, thanks. Bye.